Good evening, everyone. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the world. Tonight, I'm going to be playing with the new Flurry of Fun card kit, and I'm going to be using the Winter Terrain set to create a couple of scenes. I'm going to see if I can get more than one card done, fingers crossed. Um, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Well, it's great to see all of you coming in from all around, and I see lots of conversation about the fall weather. Well, today I looked out the window and thought it was going to be kind of chilly out because it is October in Wisconsin. And I put a sweater on. And when I got outside into the garage, it was fine. I got into the car. And when I got to work, it was like 86 degrees out. Oh my gosh, I've been so hot all day. So um, yeah, so we have the air conditioning blasting right now for my benefit. Meanwhile, Tom is over there chattering, freezing cold in the dead space. <laughs> Tom, come on up and say hello to everybody. There you are. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yes, in the cold dead space. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Glad you're with us here tonight, this morning, this afternoon. Yeah, it's been all over the place. And you're going to get into some uh, winter terrain tonight. Huh? Yes, I'm going to do some winter card making oh tonight. My gosh. Yeah, you know, I mean, we no matter coming. what, we have to start making our Christmas cards. So okay. you know, we've got to get them done. And um, I heard this weekend some of the cooler weather is moving into our area. So maybe it'll feel a little bit more like Christmas card making season. We'll see. Get our woolies on. Yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let me show you what stamp set I'm going to be using tonight. This is the Winter Terrain stamp set, and it comes in the Flurry of Fun card kit. This is a great card kit, and we only have a handful of them left. So I think tonight might be the last chance to get it. And we're not reordering this kit, but we are reordering the individual components so that you'll be able to get them individually after this kit sells out. Usually we do that during our next release, but if they come in sooner, we may start it a little sooner because we know you guys want to get your Christmas cards made. But that all depends on supply chain and how quickly we can get these in. So I'm going to be using this image right here. Definitely. I want to do something with this and I'd like to use these deer. I think that would be really fun. And then I might do one with these little houses with the little trees and stuff. I might do a double stamping with these two. Let's see how far we get. Okay. So to begin, I have a piece of cardstock here that is cut to three and a half inches by four and three quarters of an inch. And you can do that with master layouts too, if you want the little stitching. Um, in fact, why don't we do that for this card? I, I think that that would be really cute. We'll do a little bit of stitching to make it just a little cuter. Why not? So let me get my plates for my die cutting machine here. And I am going to need a piece of white cardstock. Let me find one of those. I think I might have to cut a piece of white cardstock. I've been really going through my... Uh, my white cardstock these days. And I don't know if you guys happen to see, but I finally did a card using the stencil that comes in this card kit too. And if you haven't seen that le yet, let me just give you a quick peek of it. Here it is. That is the heartfelt stencil. And that is also in the uh, heartfelt snowflake stencil, it's called. And that is also part of this kit. So if you haven't pick this one up, you may want to grab it because it is limited. Okay, so I'm going to start with Master Layouts 2, and I'm going to use the stitch die and the plain die. Okay, let's get that in place. I'm going to cut this out. 
Okay. I might do the next one without the stitch die since I already have that piece cut up, although I did throw it on the floor by accident, so we'll see. But there we go, there's our stitch die. Now, if you are going to ink blend over this entire piece of cardstock, then I would recommend cutting it a little bit bigger, doing your ink blending, and then cut it out with the stitch die because it will be a little bit difficult to ink blend over the stitches. But I'm going to mask off those edges. So let me get a piece of black cardstock and we'll just make that panel now while we have the die cutting machine here, we might as well. Let's see, do I have a panel of black or am I gonna have to cut black too? Oh, here's a piece of black cardstock. Okay, I will cut that out with master layouts too as well and we'll get that nice little shadow layer. My sleeves are too long. <laughs> Um, we always have captioning turned on uh, on our YouTube channel, so you definitely can turn the captions on. Uh, you might have to actually be logged into your YouTube account in order to do that, um, or you might have to be in the app. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but we always have them turned on. Okie dokie. So now we're going to take this panel... And I am going to tack it down onto my cardstock here, my scrap cardstock. You don't have to do that if you have a mat that you're using, like a stencil mat. And then I'm going to do a little masking off around the perimeter. So I am going to start with a half inch masking magic strip. Now I'm not going to go half inch all the way around. But what I do want to do is have a space for the greetings. So here's my open stamp set. So you can see here, let me just pull a strip off of here so you can see it. You can see that this is going to mask off the perfect size space for these greetings here. So depending on which one you want to use, it just gives you that nice little um, space. So I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to put this down here at the bottom, right along the edge, like that. But then for around here, I'm going to move to the quarter inch masking magic strips. So I'm going to go a little bit skinnier at the top and on the sides. So I like to kind of turn my cardstock rather than reaching. And you can see I'm just going right up to the edge here. Just masking that off. If you haven't tried the Masking Magic strips, oh my goodness, they really make life easy. And you know what I've been using them a lot for lately? Die cutting. I've been using them to secure dies down and it's a dream because even with all the pressure of the die cutting machine, it just peels right off. It's a really, really good way to mask. Okay, so now we have that and you can see heavier down here, skinnier up here. And these Masking Magic strips, you actually get three sizes in the pack. You get the half inch, you get the quarter inch, and then you also get eighth inch strips. And if you are interested in cards that I've made using Masking Magic strips, just type in Masking Magic strips, Gina K. Or just go to my YouTube channel and type in Masking Magic Strips. I have so many card ideas where I use those really skinny strips. It's really fun. All right, so we're going to start at the top here, and we're going to work our way down. And we're going to do more of a wintry evening scene. Oh, I see Jennifer here and Kathy Zilski. Isn't it so nice when our, uh, our other friends who make YouTube videos stop in and say hello? Hello, ladies. Okay, so we're going to start with medium lilac. Now, I hardly ever use this for ink blending. I use it a lot for stenciling, and I use it a lot for stamping layered stamps, but I hardly use it for ink blending, and it's such a great color. So I think I'm going to use it today. This is, wild li uh, this is medium lilac. Our wild lilac has a little more red in it, where our, these, this trio of lilacs has a lot more blue in it, which feels like a little more wintry. Okay, so I'm gonna start here at the top and I'm gonna just 
ink blend my way down a little bit. See, it's more of a, like a blue. It's got a lot of periwinkle in it. So I'm going to do a wintry looking sky. I might do a tiny little bit of sunshine right at the very edge, almost like the sun is setting. But I don't know if you're going to, well, you'll see it through the trees. That one might not be good to do with the houses, but you'll see it through the trees. Okay, so we've got that purple. I'm going to go down a little bit further here. Not re-inking. I'm just smoothing out the ink down this way a little bit. Okay. Because I'm going to come in toward the top here with some darker purple in a little bit. But yeah, I like that color. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit of teal. Not teal. I'm going to add turquoise C. So let me get my turquoise brush. I lost my little color clip for that. I'm sure I know where to find one. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to work my way from the side over and work that color up into the purple a little bit. Probably in my coffee. <laughs> I think it did shoot that far. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> We're going to come down a little bit more with this. You know, and as I look at this, I feel like I should come down even further with that purple. So I might do that. I might go back and add a little bit more purple in there. But these colors are really cool. I mean, they're cool, like hip cool, but they're also cool, like wintry cool. I feel like when I use a lot of peach bellini and um, lots of, um, you know, sweet mango and stuff like that, tangerine twist, it feels like a much more summery sky. And this feels a little bit more wintry. Although I do want to add something down here. But you know what? I think I'm going to change my mind. I was going to use some tangerine. I think I'm going to use yellow because I think that's going to be a whiter looking sunset. We'll see. We'll see. It doesn't All look right. good. I'll go over it. So Kenzie asks, what is the difference between teal and turquoise? Interesting. So turquoise is, it, for Gina K Designs colors, our turquoise is lighter than teal. Teal is a much deeper, darker kind of turquoise. And turquoise C is a more vibrant, bright turquoise. And then sea glass is a real pale turquoise. Um, so that's the difference in Gina K world. I hope that helps. I mean, there's probably some, you know, color theory thing that's different. Teal is probably more green and turquoise is probably more blue. All right. Now I'm going back over this again with some of this purple. I'm moving that purple down a little bit, but you see how it looks more blue. That's okay. All right. Now, I, I don't know what this little mark is, but it'll be hidden. It'll be better than horrible. Now, I'm going to come around the top of this with some dark lilac. I'm going to make the sky a little darker. So I am going to use the same brush, which is just fine, because all of these lilacs are very much in the same vein as far as color goes. Do you know how many ink colors we have? I think we have 63. And that's a guess because <laughs> I just, I should know that, but I think it's 63. Might be more than that. Somebody tell me if you have them all, how many we have. That's terrible that I don't really know the answer to that. Coming in darker up here. Okay. Now I'm going to do a little bit of yellow right along here and we'll see how that looks. So I think the yellow that I'm going to pick, mm, I think, I think I'll go with wild dandelion, just real close to the bottom, really close. Just like that. I 
And then maybe, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm winging this. So I'm looking at it going, eh, I don't know. Maybe I'll just use whatever orange is left on this brush. So it's going to be hard for me to tell you what it is. But my guess is if I do just a little test color here, my guess is it's got maybe a little tomato soup on there because I was working, I was doing some card projects for a class I'm teaching here. And so I'm think uh, it, it's like all fall colors. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of that in there just to make it a little more orange. So I think we asked this before, but you're, you dream in color, right? I do dream in color. Do you dream in color? Uh, I don't know, um, which probably means I don't, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think most of the time I dream in color. I don't necessarily wake up and think that my dreams are like scary horror films. They seem really real. Do you remember the last time you were you were doing a card in your dreams? Oh, I probably make cards every night in my dreams. <laughs> so do you remember colors? <laughs> I don't really remember my dreams vividly. All right, so I'm going to use a little bit of blue denim here right at the top to darken this up even a little bit more right along the top. So you kind of get the feel that night is closing in. Okay. You know how that looks. Okay, there we go. Hello, Mindy Egan. All right, so now I'm gonna take the tape off. So I'm gonna start with the side ones. This always looks better after you take the tape off, the ink blending. We only ever retired one color and that was cranberry tart because it had a pigment in it that was no longer, you couldn't, you couldn't use it anymore in the United States for some reason. I don't know why, but we are working on a new cranberry color. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Oh, I love that. Okay. And see, it does make a difference. Like once you take that off, everything feels better blended, doesn't it? Except that little mark there. I don't know what that is. I think I, I think I touched some of the cardstock earlier with lotion on my hands, but it's all right. We'll make it work. You could stop there and like, that's like a meditation scene. It really is. It kind of looks almost a little beachy too. But I think when we get these trees on here, look at that. Isn't that going to be so pretty? All right, so let's get the trees on here. Stop looking and keep stamping. <laughs> okay, so this is a brand new stamp that I have not used yet out of this package. So I am going to rub my fingers all over it. You see, I'm just like getting my fingers like all over it and kind of dulling the shine, the clearness of it. I'm just getting the manufacturer's residue off a little bit. Still gonna have to stamp it more than once, I'm sure. Yeah, it does kind of look beachy. Might have to put some snow in the mix, we'll see. Okay, and it's okay if we go a little over the edge down here, I think. Let's see, am I still gonna have room for my words? Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll go right down to the edge and we'll get it all in there. Can I get my head in the way for a second? I just wanna see there. I think that'll work. And make sure it's as straight as it can be because these are stick trees, you know, they're straight up and down. And I also wanna make sure that I've got like, I've got it close enough to this side. So I'm gonna move it just a, just a skosh. Don't ask me what a skosh is. I'm sure somebody knows what a scotch is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to pull that off there. And this still has a little tape on the back, so it's holding on pretty well. So you don't have to put the tape back on to stamp this? What do you mean? To stamp this. The... 
Somebody asked if you have to put the tape back on. Oh, no. I'm just going to stamp it right into the box. Okay. I mean, you could. You could leave the tape on. But I don't mind if it, ex if it escapes a little bit over the top or the bottom. So we're going to stamp this a couple times. Let me find my Chucky tool. Where did that go? Oh, no, Tom. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I thought it was in my office. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's just such a simple, simple look. Do one more. I feel like I've been there. I know, right? <laughs> I think ink blending is just a matter of practicing. It's a matter of having the right ink, a good blending ink. Gina K Designs Ink has a smoothing agent in it. And just because the cases are all the same, I have to say this because I hear a lot of people telling people that all the dye inks are the same because a lot of the companies get them manufactured at the same place. It is true. A lot of the companies, including me, we, we get our stamps, our ink manufactured, but they have lots of different formulas to choose from and they will tweak a formula based on what you want it to do. And when we first went to them, we wanted our ink to blend so that it looked like airbrush when it's done. And some inks are really good for water coloring. Ours are okay for water, and co water coloring. You can do water color with it, but we opted to have more of the agent that makes the ink smooth out, which makes it less water color-y. And some companies, their ink is water activated. Like ours, you can activate this with water, but it's different levels, different formulas. And ours has one of the highest concentrations of smoothing agents in it. And what that does is even places where it didn't look so good when I first started, that ink, the way it blends down or the way it dries down, it dries down with an airbrushed finish. Honestly, I'm not that good, but it looks really good. Okay, so now let's see. Do we put the little deer in here? I think we should. I think it would be cute to put the little deer. Let's just see what he would look like in there. Oh, yeah, he'll look great in there. We could put him over here, too, where there's a little bit more space. Let's do that. We'll put them right there together. So we'll get this guy right here. I know they're not all exactly the same. Doesn't mean the other ones aren't good. There's a lot of different properties and different things, different different inks do different things. And they're, you know, they're all good at certain things. But ours just happens to be really good at blending and drying with a smooth finish. And I think you can see that because you know it didn't look all that good as we were going. I mean, seriously, if you're watching this on replay or you want to go back to the replay, look at it as I was blending it and then zip ahead and look at that blend now and you will see the difference. Okay, I'm using an ink cube for this because it's a tiny stamp and I think it's just going to make it a little easier. Let me clean the stamp too first. My tidy towel. I took my tidy towels home that I use in my lives and I finally washed them all, put them all in the washing machine over the weekend. Felt so good to do that. So Brenda wants a word of the day definition for skosh and here it is. Okay. <laughs> shtickle. Or shtickle. It means just a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know what shtickle means. <laughs> Okay, now there's one little spot that's missing on that deer. And what I'd like to do is I'll just get like a little blending stump and I'll just pick up a little black ink on the blending stump and I'll just pat it into place there so that that little dot is gone. I think it's just, I have to clean it a little bit better. Okay, so there's the boy. And now let's put the girl in here. She'll be right there. 
I think I like to see what she's going to look like in there. Yeah, I'll just put her right in there. It's like they're kind of hiding back there a little bit because their feet aren't quite as level as um, as the front here of the trees. So it makes them look like they're standing back a little bit, which if anybody lives in Wisconsin and sees all the deer that are out right now, they are definitely hiding in the woods. Question from Nancy. Gina, did you say that you washed your tidy towel in the washing machine? Yes, I did. And I always do. I wash my tidy towels in the washer. I throw them all in together because I have about five of them that I use. This way I don't have to ever clean them when I'm working. And um, I throw them in very low amount of water, like a really tiny load. I put a little Tide detergent in with them and I wash them on hot and then I just take them out. You don't put them in the dryer. I just take them out and they are ready to go. And they smell so good when they come out. They're just fresh. Okay, so we've got our deer in the mix. It's pretty fun. There we go. And now I think I'm gonna, I think I'll put the greeting on first. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll put the greeting on first. So, gosh, I don't know. Do I want this to be a Christmas card? I think I do. I think I would use this as a Christmas card. Wishing you joy would be nice, too, in there. Uh, winter wishes is nice. I'll do winter wishes because then I can send it anytime. Like, if I don't want to use this as a Christmas card, I could just, you know, randomly send it to a friend and it would be okay. All right, let's see how that looks. I feel like I gotta move it this way, just a hair, just a skosh. <laughs> That's the new word today. <laughs> but I'm gonna test this first to make sure that it lines up where I want it to. So I'm gonna do my little thing that I do with my acetate sheet. This is the sheet from my stamp set, and I am going to just put it down here and then I'm going to test stamp it onto the acetate just to make sure it looks straight. That's a pretty, uh, pretty obvious spot there. And if it doesn't look straight, how does that look? That looks pretty straight. Yeah, that looks good. I think I'm going to go for it. So I'm just going to clean that off. And then we'll stamp it. Now this is a very delicate greeting. It's got lots of thin lines. So I'm gonna give it a real light, just a little bit of pressure. And then I'm gonna stamp it again. I'd rather stamp it a couple times with light pressure than one time and squish it all out of shape. Mmm, pretty, pretty, huh? Crisp. Crisp, crispy. Okay. So. Now we are going to add a little splatter, a little white splatter to it. Yes, Diane, you can you reuse the masking tape several times. Yes, see, you can. I just the masking went right magic. For that one. Yep. See, you knew that. You knew that. That's the first one. <laughs> so I'm going to just tape this down again, and I'm going to do just that. I'm going to get that same piece of masking magic, and I'm going to just place it down here again along the edge because I don't want the splatter to go on the words. And then I found this little model. Of, it, this is just white acrylic paint. I had another one somewhere, but this one, I think I bought this at a game store. So I'm just going to put a little paint there. And I do have a little brush with some water. I lost my fan brush. I had a fan brush that was perfect, and I lost it somewhere, but I'm just going to Add a little bit of white specks in here. Getting it all over my shirt. Kind of looks like stars too, but I like the idea that it's more snowy. I want to get some more up here. Oh, it's everywhere. It's everywhere but on my card. So Joanne is interested in, she said, can you make a file of the different sunrise, sunset, 
combos you use with the names of the inks, please? It is kind of a good question how, you know, how somebody would find uh, or search maybe to find different sunsets that you've come up with? Yeah. Um, yeah, I can add some of those that I've done. I mean, if you see a card that I've made on YouTube, I always add in the description the ink colors that I use. So they are on every video. So as you look through the different videos of my ink blending, and if you, if you type in Gina K ink blending, like a million videos of ink blending will come up. Um, but yeah, it, it, they're all there. So if there is one that you see and you're like, oh, what, what combination is that? Just look in the description on the video because they are actually all there. But I will look into that. That That is definitely something I can do. I just don't know how quickly I can do it. All right, so we've added, okay, let's see if you can see that a little closer. We've added a little bit of snowiness in there. Yeah, toothbrush works great. But Tom just won't let me use his anymore. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> she says that like she asks. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to add this panel onto my black card panel. So let me get my tape runner. Kind of fun. I think I'll put the tape runner on here instead because I don't want to turn that over just yet. I'm not sure if it's completely dry. And then what color card base should I use? You know what might look really pretty and not take away from all of the beautiful color? Craft. I think craft will give it that woodsy look too. So let's just look at a piece of craft. And also gray might be really pretty, but here's what it will look like on craft. What do you guys think of that? Does that make it look more wintry and kind of softer? Hmm. We'll try it on one other color. Let's try it on real light gray. There's on light gray. I like that. I don't know if I have any stormy sky. I might have one piece in here somewhere. No, I don't. But I have slate. Here's slate. This is very dark. But I think you won't see the black as much on slate. So let's go with the light gray. Yeah, okay, we'll go with the light gray. Jennifer, I saw you say gray too. So that, that's cool. Okay, I can cut this with my little baby paper cutter because this is getting cut at five and a half. We do have matching envelopes for a lot of our colors of cardstock, especially this one is one of them. And gray envelopes are really, really nice. They just, oh, they're so pretty. You can add a little washi tape or a little stamping on it. So I'll score that at the four and a quarter inch mark. And we'll pop that on. Here we go. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty. So I think it's dry now. Alrighty. Okay, there we go. Card number one. Very simple. And I think that yellow in there makes uh, makes it feel cooler. It doesn't feel quite as, I don't know, peachy and orangey. And it feels a little bit more, I don't know, a little cooler. Okay, I'm going to put this one aside. And I think we have time to get one more in, especially now that we know what we're doing. So I'll cut another panel. I was going to not use the master layouts on this one, but I love the stitching so much that I'm very spoiled. I have to do it. So we'll do another one and maybe we'll pick some different colors for the blend. Maybe we'll go more with those peachy and the pink. We'll do like some pink in the sky. And then we'll use the little houses. I might not go for the full mountains behind there or the gray, but we'll see. We'll see. 
we'll have to do a little more um i'll have to get that pink a little higher on the on the card itself if we're going to blend down into pink because if we use all of these stamps you know this is gonna this is gonna come up pretty high into our design so this will be one like my friend had asked earlier wait don't you want to leave the masking magic strips on this will be one that we stamp with the masking magic strips on for sure because this design is bigger. It's way bigger. You can see how small that is. Let's see here. You can see how small that design is versus how long these are. These are gonna extend outside of what our, um, our Masking Magic space is. Ah, uh, thank you all so much. You guys are so sweet. Move my ink stand. I don't, I'm getting weaker, Tom. <laughs> to cut with these die with the die cutting machine. I'm getting weaker. That was not exaggerated at all. That was really hard to get through for some reason. <laughs> okay, so that's master layouts too. And once again, I just put this aside here. I'm going to use the old, old one. I might not do any snow on this one. But I'm just going to put a little tape on the back and get that lined up again. And then again, I'm going to use the half inch one at the bottom so I have room for my greeting. And then we'll go with the quarter inch at the top. Here we go. And then the sides. Oh, I have an electric machine, but it's super heavy. And I don't have any space on my desktop and I do not have a die cutting machine cam like Kathy Zilski does. She's got a special camera for her die cutting machine. I don't have that. I actually think Kathy's workspace is probably a lot bigger than mine. Mine is really tiny. I think it was funny when Simon Hurley came here. I think he he's so kind. He didn't say it, but I think he was probably shocked at how small my area that I work on is. <laughs> we were really close. <laughs> okay. So let's start this time with, let's go with tranquil teal. Let's start with some teal at the top. So I'm going to use the same brush, the turquoise sea brush. Oh, we have a lot of deer too. We also had turkeys. I had a whole flock of turkeys in the road over the weekend. So we'll get that teal in there. All right, Tom. So while I'm ink blending these colors, do you happen to have a word of the day? And I just want to point out how cool it is that these little paint spots are turning tranquil teal. That is cool. <laughs> Okay, words of the day. Yeah, we have words of the day. Words. And yeah, and the theme is um, fancy decaffeinated coffee drinks. Ooh. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> for instance, if you like a decaffeinated latte, that would be a natte. <laughs> It really would be because all the joy is gone. <laughs> and a uh, decaffeinated uh, espresso is a depresso. <laughs> and a decaffeinated cappuccino would be a nappuccino. <laughs> well, yeah, because you can. <laughs> and finally, oh, a no. cup of joe is, of course, a cup of no. <laughs> a cup that's, of no. That's a great... <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> All right, we have our tranquil teal down there. Now let's do a little in the navy at the top. I know you're here. In the navy, that's real dark. Does the deer have any dough? Yeah, two bucks. <laughs> 
<laughs> dun, dun, dun. Remember that one? I do remember that one. Three Stooges. That's a dad joke. <laughs> so I'm just working some of this in the Navy. See how that's getting nice and dark up there? That just helps us distinguish that night sky from like a morning sunrise. I don't feel like it looks the same, a sunrise, as a sunset. They just have a different look about them. Okay. And now let's get a little purple in there. We'll go back to the wild lilac for this one. I'm trying to use all different colors this time around. So I'm going to use wild lilac. And you can just see on these brushes, can you see the difference in the color between the um, light, medium, and dark lilacs and then this lilac, the wild lilac? This definitely is a redder purple. See them side by side here, even the lids? It's got a lot more blue in it. So we'll add some purple. Coming across with a light hand. I'm going to work that up a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to add a little bit of pink. And I know that doesn't look super blendy, but give it give it some time. Give it a little time. Pink, pink, pink. Bubblegum? Let's do some bubblegum pink. There's probably some passionate pink left on this brush, but we'll add a little bubble gum in here. And then we'll go right along the bottom there with that yellow and orange mix again. Start at the bottom with the yellow. I didn't even ink it up again. That was Wild Dandelion. And then we'll go in with whatever orange is on here, which I believe is tomato soup. Okay, so this is going to be my blend. I'm going to go back over that pink a little bit, but you're not even going to see much of this. The pink sky. I, I like the pink in the sky. Okay, so now we're going to use the Misty. We're going to leave all of this on here. I'm going to just reach under and pull the whole thing off. Yeah, ink blending is kind of mesmerizing, isn't it? Even when you're doing it yourself, it's just so fun to see like what it all ends up looking like. Okay. You know what? I got to move this because, and here's why, and I'm going to add a little bit more tape back here. I'm going to do it right in the center here, and then I'm going to use the masking magic to hold it in place because this stamp is going to be, I think it's going to be bigger than this thing. So if we did this row, we could add some gray trees behind here, but I'm kind of in the mood just for the simple look right now. So let's just try the simple here. I guess it doesn't go too far outside. We can actually stamp that gray afterwards. Let's see. Maybe not. Maybe we'll do the gray. Should we do the gray? You guys want to see the gray trees back there? Let's do the gray. Get the gray a little bit. We'll just do a little bit. We'll do like the treetops. Because then this is going to come down here. Yeah, I think it'll look good. All right, let's do the treetops. Nervous. I'm a little nervous. Okay. So we'll just do a real light mist. Now this stamp is very solid and it really needs to be cleaned. 
back. That's the tight detail, making that stretch. We'll see how it goes. Okay, we're gonna use soft stone. And we'll see what it looks like. Okay, here we go. A little nervous. Oh, yes. That's really pretty. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. It's really misty back there. And I like that. And now we'll go back with our ones up front here where we're going to make it nice and black. Where is my black ink pad? Oh no. Oh gosh. How did I lose my black ink pad? Oh, here it is. Okay, so this is gonna need several stampings because this is a big stamp and it's not conditioned well at all because I haven't used it. But we're gonna do it. It's got a lot of detail in it, so I don't wanna over stamp it like I don't want to squish it or make it mucky with ink if that makes sense I just want to do it lightly and then we'll go back over it again Ooh, come on now stay where you're supposed to hopefully that'll stay where it's supposed to I think it will. Yikes. Oh, it looks cute though, doesn't it? Oh, see, it moved. It moved. No, it moved. Okay, so don't do that. <laughs> don't do that let's look at the blend but i'm not going to make this card because it did move that's a bummer let's see it happens to the best of us right happens to all of us we are all the same but even though it moved i do want you to see what these trees look like back here can you see how they look so shady so you could kind of get that same look even with those tall trees. So if you wanted to, let's just do a little demo of that. I see. What's I that? That looks pretty cool. You do? I do. Well, it's okay, but it's 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 double stamped and it doesn't look nice and crisp. And it's my fault for not conditioning the stamp more because it was too sticky and it's stuck. I. I did wipe the first one. You heard me scritch, but I didn't scritch on the second one. And that's really my bad because it is a really cute stamp. Let's see if I can show you what it's supposed to look like. I think, but we have to tape this down. I want to just show you all the detail in it up close. And then I want to show you that other stamp, stamp twice. Can you see all of the cute little window detail? See, that's why I don't like the other one. But it's only paper, so it's not that big of a deal. But that second stamping gets it much blacker. This is so cute. Might make something out of this. Ooh, I think I will make something out of this. Maybe I'll save that other technique for another day. I'll make something out of this one because it looks good. Okay, so let's let that sit for a minute. And let me get something out of my box here. I think what I'm going to make out of this. 
will be a cute little tag. Won't that be adorable? Let's make a cute little tag out of it. And then we will use, let me find my big word set. Let's see, do the words fit in here? We have to do to and from, and we'll make a Christmas tag. Let's do it. I think this would be too big because I don't have enough cardstock here, but this would be a nice size tag too. This would be great. And then you might be able to get some of these bigger words in there, like merry and bright. But I need more cardstock up top. So we won't do that, although. Although, nah, we'll do the small one. We'll do the small one and we'll do a, a to and from. All right, so we're going to ink blend on this, but in the opposite way. If that makes sense. So let's ink blend. See, it's never a loss, never a total loss. So let me grab this piece of cardstock again, and I'm going to flip it over. And I am going to start up here with some of that tranquil teal. I have time. I might as well whip it into a quick tag. This is daring, but I'm gonna go for it. All right, we're gonna do that tranquil teal up here. I don't even know what those marks are, but they're not gonna be there because I'm gonna cut in a different spot. And then we're gonna go in with some of that in the navy. I think these are little bend marks in the cardstock. That's what you're seeing. Then we're going to go in with the wild lilac. I'm going to come down further with the teal. Add some of that pink. And a little bit of that orange. Oh my goodness. Let's come down further with the teal. We're saving it. Okay. This is going to be very cute when we cut it. All right, let me find my plates in this mess. And I know I'm not quite on the screen here, but honestly, I should take a picture and show you guys what this mess looks like and you'll be like, wow. Okay, we'll get a little bit of the three houses. You know, we'll, we'll get more of the trees. We'll do this part right here. And eh, I like the three houses though. Mm. Do you like that there? Or do you like this here? More houses or more trees? Let's take a vote while I make a little room. More houses or more trees? Let's see what they're saying. More trees? Oh, the three houses? Oh, goodness. I'm gonna have a war. Let's see. More trees, more houses, more houses. It does feel a little more balanced when you see the trees in there. All right, we'll go with a few more trees. I honestly don't think it matters that much, but I'm making a big deal about it, aren't I? Oh, I should have let Tom pick. Now it's too late. <laughs> Once you hear the first crack <laughs> of the machine, it's too late. We should have let Tom pick. It's very cute. That turned out really cute. I like it. We saved it. That's all that matters. We saved the second project in some way. 
All right, so now we're going to get the to and the from on here. And I'm going to show you one more thing when we're after we get the to and the front from stamped on here. Which are upside down. So we have to and from. So when I make tags, um, I love the way a tag looks. I really better secure this. I love the way a tag looks on the front because of the stitching, but it really kind of looks terrible on the back. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to cut a second tag and flip it around and we're going to adhere them together. Okay, greetings on there. This will be fun. It's a fun little tag. I think we're I think we found a way to save this. Okay. So now we've got two from on there. I'm going to pull this off gently. I'm going to put it over here for a second. Now I'm going to get the die cutting machine again. And I'm going to cut a second white tag. Here. Ooh, where did the die go? Here it is. So we're going to cut a second one. Where did the other plate go? Here it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I'll show you what I mean. I think whenever you have stitched dies, they certainly do look so pretty on the front. You see the, let's zoom in a bit. You see the pretty stitching on the front there, but it's kind of ugly on the back, you see? So the back of this tag is kind of ugly. But if I put them together, then it's pretty on the front and it's pretty on the back. And the other thing that's kind of cool about this is if you wanted to, you could cut this right across here and then you could right across here and you could slip a gift card in there. So I kind of like that too. That's another fun thing. There we go. Just get them together. Pretty good. And then you can always go around the outside if you want, just to make sure that it's... Give it a little edging. And that way, if any of the white from the back tag is showing, you'll catch it. way down and then we're going to add a little cord to that I've got some old cording here I also have some pink Baker's twine which is kind of pretty let's use that I don't remember where I got this it's been a very long time but um, I'm sure you guys have cording or baker's twine or something in your, in a drawer somewhere. Dig around. I guarantee you it's there. <laughs> so I'm going to fold this in half and then in half again. And I'm going to make a loop. And then this loop comes in from here, from the back, a double loop. And I will bring this cord through. Oops. Let's do that one more time because I didn't grab it all. One more time. Get your loops in from the back and then open the loops. Grab this tail and bring it through like that. 
That makes it look pretty on the front. I like that. Now, if you like it better this way, you can do it the other way. Let's try it the other way and see how that looks. You can go in from the, the front toward the back. Maybe you like it this way better with the little thing at the top. Either way, whatever you like better. And then I like to give it a second knot up here just to kind of keep all these things together because then you could still hang it on something. You know, you could hang it on the tree, you could hang it on a bottle of wine, you could hang it on a gift, and then cut these little extras off. Like that. So there we go. We have a tag. And that is kind of cute, but can you see all that cute detail? We just couldn't, I mean, this, this double stamped version just wasn't gonna cut it really. Okay, <laughs> this is the one. All right, so we have this cute little tag and then we have a little card, both made with that winter terrain stamp set that's available in the Flurry of Fun card kit. So Tom, you wanna to give these away? Let's give these away yeah. and set them free into the world. And we made it right at eight o'clock too. Yes. Crazy, huh? Okay, let's start with the little tag. Who's gonna get the little tag? The little tag, drum roll, please. I wanna put sequins on this. Here it goes, okay. going out to Kathy Harner. Kathy Yay, Harner. Yay, Kathy, you get the save project, all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kathy, mm -hmm. all right, and then who gets the Winter Wishes card? Okay, the Winter Wishes card goes to Darlene Sale. Darlene, Yay, Darlene. Sale. Darlene, congratulations. All right, ladies, all you have to do is send your name and address to info at GinaKDesigns.com, and we will get these out to you. Well, you guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. We had so much fun. Even in the mistakes, there's always a little bit of fun and a little bit of laughter. And thank you, Tom, for your fun words of the day today. Tom and I will be back on uh, Thursday with another Crafternoon Live that starts at noon central time. And then I'm going to try my best to get back here over the weekend with another five minute card or a foil at Friday. You never know. In the meantime, everybody stay safe and healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again Mwah. real soon. Bye bye.